When you're recording a song here in GarageBand or in any DAW, it's always a good idea to leave yourself at least a few bars at the front of the track to make sure you have a buffer zone there. But what if you've just started from bar one? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can use our sections to solve this problem. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record and release your best music. And if you're using GarageBand to create that music, you may have come across this problem before. I know I did, especially early on, and that is where you haven't left this space at the start. So if you're using sections, which is something I highly recommend, then it's a pretty easy fix. And even if you're not using sections and your whole track is in one section, we've got a fix for you there as well. So I was uh, wise enough on this case to actually put in these four bars here, which is good because it means that this guitar part is not going to be cut off here at the start. And when I go to mix and master this song, I'm going to be able to have that one second or half a second I need beforehand. Whereas if I actually had it right up against here, we wouldn't have that. So what I'm going to do here though, is let's go into my sections. Let's tap on the plus button in the top right and let's pretend I didn't do this. So I'm going to delete this section A. I'm just going to slide to the left and tap delete. So that's deleted that first section. If I tap all sections now, and tap back out here, you can see now that we've got some problems because this is butting right up here against my guitars. And if I hit play, it doesn't sound too bad because it's a finger style guitar. If that was a strum, sometimes your strum actually starts just before the actual first beat. Plus we do want that extra space. So let's assume that this is your track and you're like, ah oh man, I didn't put that bit in at the start. How do I actually get it done? Well, the easiest way to do is to use your sections. So that is to tap in the plus button in the top right here. And then what we can do is we can actually add in a section. So to add a section, we tap on add. And this is going to create section J, which is going to pop down the bottom here. Now we only want four bars, so we'll tap on the I and we'll make this four bars by dropping it down there and then going back. And you're probably saying, Pete, let's put that at the very end. That's not going to help us. You're right. So what we need to do now is tap the edit button in the top right corner here. And now we can actually change the order of our sections. And this is a very cool tip for a lot of reasons. If you want to switch around your verses and your choruses and your intros or add in something, this is a cool way to do it. So keep that in mind. And again, if you want to learn more about sections, there's a video linked up the top and at the end of this one. But what we're going to do is we're going to tap and hold on the three lines to the right side of this. And then we're going to drag it up to the very top and plonk it there. And there you go. And now we're going to hit done and tap back out to go out here. Actually, I've gone into that wrong section. Let's go up to the top, go all sections, and then tap back out here. So now when we come to the start of our track, we are good to go. We've got this additional space in here and we're golden. Now, that's the easiest way to do it when you've got multiple tracks and multiple sections like this. There is another way that you can actually move all of your audio if you didn't want to use the sections, and that is to actually select all of your audio and shift it. Now, I'll show you this, but I don't recommend it, but it's a good thing to just know that you can actually do. So what I'm going to do is tap on plus here and I'm going to add a new section and this time I'm going to leave it as eight bars and leave it at the end there. Let's go back to all sections and see what we've created. So at the end now we've got this and this is the method that uh, that some folks have used or have shown me in the past and I'm like yeah it's, it's okay it works but the sections method is better. So what we can now actually do, let's just uh, move this piano over a bit so that we can do this a bit better. We can actually select all of the audio in our track and then move it all at once. So to do that, we tap up here in the top left and then we drag a big giant rectangle. You gotta be careful with this and make sure you just keep it on the screen over every track, release. Now everything now is selected and it gets a little bit fiddly, especially here on the iPhone. But what we can now do is tap anywhere in any of here, any of these tracks and the whole lot Okay, I made the mistake. You can see why this is this is a tricky thing to do. So the problem was is I pressed too hard, it enabled, it engaged 3D touch, and it started playing that track. That is not what you want. So let's try this again. This time we will gently tap and hold and drag, and look what happens. All of our audio gets dragged across. So we're gonna create a spot in the front here. Why is this not a good option? Well, you can see why, because look what it's done. I've got these automations that I've put in here. It's moved the audio, but it hasn't moved the automation. So if you've got automation on any of your 
tracks, it's not going to work for you because it does not move the automation along with the audio. So that is probably why that method doesn't work so well. If you're just moving a little bit of audio, you don't have automation and you want to shift it, then select all and moving can actually work. But you are so much better off using your sections here to do this. Now, I did say, what if you've only got everything in one section? It's the same process, but let's show you a quick demo before we finish up. So here is a little part of a song I'm working on at the moment. It's all in one section, as we can see, if we tap in the plus here, it's all just eight bars in section A. It's my song called Autumn Haze. It sounds like this. Autumn Haze is coming down. But this is like the chorus part of it. So now I want to build it out and add verses and intros and other things. So no problem here. We can tap on the plus button and then we can go our add. And again, it's going to put this next section below. We tap on edit. We grab the three lines here. We drag up to the top. We're good to go. We hit done. We hit all sections. So now what I can do is I can start building out this first section. You can see that things like my automation that we had there is all still intact. Once you add sections before and afterwards, and same thing, if you want to add a verse afterwards, we just go back in here, add a section, and then we're good to go. Now, you will notice here that our sections can only be named section B, section A, section C. It is a limitation of GarageBand. We can't rename those. And yes, when you use this method, sometimes your section labeling is all out of whack, but it is still a great way to actually get things done. And again, if we wanted to use that other method, we can select everything like that and we can move it around. But for the reasons you saw before, I don't recommend using that. There you go. That is how we can use sections here to solve these problems. And if you've got a song that starts right on the start, you want to add in an intro, you want to move things around, sections are your friend. I hope you found this video interesting. There's two more that you may want to check out linked right down below right now. You can also tap or click on the Studio Live Today icon to subscribe if you want to keep up to date with all the tips and tricks and tutorials here on the channel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next video.